Have you ever wondered exactly how you should fill out your mortgage application and the things that you should do and the things that you should never do? I'm going to walk you through that exactly here. and We're going to do this in less than five minutes. So let's get going. First thing is make sure that when you fill out your loan application, please use your correct legal name. Check your legal documents, whether it's your ID or other information. Make sure that is correct so when they run your credit report and they get all that correct, there's absolutely no question about who you are. And most importantly, making sure that only your credit items show up on your credit report. Make sure all that information is in here. Now, if you're not a U.S. citizen or not a permanent resident alien, don't even think about shortcutting that part because the, it will be verified really quickly. So make sure you talk to your lender about what your status is with regards to that citizenship question and get it right. Also, make sure you understand when it comes to borrowing money, the number of people isn't necessarily a thing that you want to worry about. You want to make sure that the people you're borrowing money with, if it's anybody besides yourself, to somebody that is going to be involved in the qualifying. So that could also hurt you. So make sure you review everyone's credit and everyone's income and everyone's liabilities to make sure that you're best suited for qualifying for that mortgage. Now, when we get into things like contact information, please make sure you're using your personal information for contact, like your personal mobile phone and your personal email. I know this is weird, but um, if you use your business information in there, things could get weird in terms of background checks and communicating with you effectively, especially after the loan closes. You do need two years history for residents. You do need to make sure that you're documenting how you're paying for that rent if you are, or if you own a home, making sure that that mortgage is in your name because if it's in someone else's, then you have to get their documentation to show that it was paid. It can get kind of messy sometimes. Let's get over into jobs. So when it comes to jobs, two-year employment history is what you have to have. And you need to make sure that you make enough money on either full-time income or an average of the last two years to make sure that your income is at least steady, if not going up, to make sure your underwriter is going to feel comfortable qualifying for that mortgage. Now, if you get into things like bonuses or commissions or other items that are sometimes fluctuating, again, we need to make sure that you're talking to your lender about that situation so they can properly average your income and come up with something that's qualifiable so that you're not having any surprises as you get closer to closing. You are allowed to have more than one job at once. It's a thing. Uh, but what we have to make sure is that there's at least two years verified of everything, especially if you're self-employed or if you're working for an organization where they're paying you 1099, it's also known as self-employment. Now let's get over into assets and liabilities. Everything that you can verify in terms of assets is something that you want to grab and put together and make sure you put on your application. If you go own those assets, if you own those assets with somebody else, make sure you've got their written authorization to use those assets. You're going to need that letter. Don't skimp it. When it comes to liabilities, this is all about what debt you owe. If you are an authorized user on an account, you might have to prove that you're not paying that back. So again, if you're showing that you're actually paying that liability, you might actually get you might actually have that liability included in your debt, which can sometimes be problematic. And when you're getting involved with other liabilities, things like your child support separate maintenance, make sure that if it's an obligation and it's coming out of your accounts, you document that on the application. So again, there's no surprises. When it comes to real estate that you own, make sure that when you go through that list, you're listing everything that your name is on. They will check. They will find properties that have your name on a deed or something like that. So make sure you're very clear with your lender about all of that. So again, there's no surprises. When you come over and you put all this together, what's going to happen is all of this data is going to be analyzed. And what happens at the end is you're asked these declarations. These are to be read and understood. Occupancy fraud is not a thing that the mortgage industry likes or will tolerate. So if you're going to be buying this as your primary home, it better make sense. Otherwise, it might be a second home or an investment property, and there are different guidelines and different costs of money that go into that. After you get through all your application and you've answered everything honestly, of course, you're going to sign, and that's going to bring you into the summary of your transaction. So when we look at how the money comes together, this is where you can pull together all of your credits and all of your assets in terms of things that you're going to be using to close on this home. This is where everything gets summarized for you in one place to make sure that it's what you need and make sure that you can qualify and afford the home that you're looking for. This has been explaining the application in five minutes or less. 
My name is Larry Bailey and look for the next video. Don't forget to subscribe or like this video. That way we know you want to hear more. Thank you.